Today, Odyssey is announcing the new Odyssey LCD 5, which will be their new flagship planar magnetic headphone and which is the first all new flagship LCD over ear design in five years. The LCD 5 is perhaps the headphone I've been most looking forward to, most anticipating in the last few years. While I knew it was coming, I think a lot of people, kind of understandably, thought that perhaps Odyssey had completely shifted gears away from developing new flagship audiophile headphones. Over the last several years, we've seen Odyssey veer into new paths, exciting new territories that in our space, smaller, more boutique audiophile headphone makers had not previously ventured into, and they really still haven't, except for Odyssey. Now, the driving force behind this is Odyssey's CEO, Shankar Thiagusamadram. He's one of the smartest people I've met in the industry, endlessly curious. He'll call me or text me to ask if I've heard of this technological development or seen that advancement, and my answer is usually no, and then he'll proceed to tell me about that something I'd not heard about before and why it's so exciting. He's actually the guy who many years ago told me I should be paying closer attention to virtual reality and augmented reality, as well as the importance of their associated audio technologies. Put a person like that at the helm of an audiophile headphone company, and you end up with some crazy but very cool and commercially successful products like the Odyssey Mobius with its 3D head tracking out of head surround capabilities, and the Odyssey Penrose which brought much of the Mobius's capabilities to the major gaming console platforms. Not surprisingly, it's those two products that have been given the lion's share of any attention paid to Odyssey lately. And so it was easy to think, as many people have, that perhaps Odyssey had stopped developing new purest audiophile flagship class headphones. Nope. Along with all the cutting edge tech, 3D audio, DSP, they've been all along also developing new audiophile materials, technologies, and headphones. Now last month they released a new flagship electrostatic headphone, the new Carbon, and today they're announcing a new flagship planar magnetic headphone with the Odyssey LCD5. Shankar came and visited us in Detroit a little while ago to talk about the new Odyssey LCD5. Shankar, thanks for coming out to HeadFi HQ. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so today we're going to be talking about, they're launching a new flagship uh, planar magnetic headphone. Uh, I'm going to say it. This is the, the Odyssey LCD5. And this is kind of exciting because, um, I mean, we mentioned it in, in another discussion. Uh, you were working on things like the Mobius, the Penrose. And I think a lot of people, and a lot of people have asked me when we've talked about Odyssey, um, is Odyssey getting out of audiophile? Um, because you were still selling the LCD models, but there weren't a lot of new models coming out. And I think right now the answer is clear. You're very much still developing for audiophile. And I think a lot of your Odyssey fans are going to be pretty thrilled to see this. Yeah. So why don't we talk about the LCD5, uh, what differentiates it, what makes it your flagship? Sure. Um, you know, we, we put in a lot of effort to, um, on our headphone design. LCD4 was 2016. Feels a lot, long time ago. It does. Um, and after that, we have made some small revisions like 4Z and stuff, but nothing from the ground up like what we did with LCD3 or LCD4. Okay. So we went back to the drawing board and we said, you know, let's take all the stuff, feedback and everything that we have gotten. We have also learned to make uh, with um, the other headphones. We have also try, learned a lot of things about trying our headphones. So we went back to the um, drawing board and completely redesigned it. Uh, one of the things was always weight. Um, so we decided we wanted to reduce the weight and make it more comfortable. And also we wanted to, it is an LCD headphone. LCD headphones have always had this um, particular look. We wanted to update the look and make it a little bit more modern. So that's basically what we did with this design. So one of the things I do want to talk about is the weight. You mentioned it and I just want to cover that briefly because the LCD4, which is one of my favorite headphones, is just a little bit too heavy for me. And so a little bit beyond what I could shoulder on my pencil neck. And uh, this is substantially lighter. Right. So and in this particular headphone, so when we went to the drawing board to do this, we in, in the design uh, intent was to reduce the weight. So in this headphone, almost every part, and even the yokes, the housing, all these things are completely designed out of magnesium. Okay. Okay, a carbon fiber headband. And uh, one of the other design considerations we did was instead of wood, we use uh, acetate um, so that we can modify the look and make it easier. So, um, and it's substantially lighter, um, and we'll publish the specs on the website. Um, so, so it is intentionally designed to be um, as efficient uh, in terms of, you know, we still use the very thin uh, transducer films. Um, the magnetic flux is still 1.5 Tesla. So we have managed to retain all those things and still make the headphones lighter. Yeah, and it is again, substantially lighter. Um, 
one of the things about it, and we'll get to the we'll get to the the things that make. Let's we'll talk about the engineering behind the sound in a minute. But I still want to talk about the design because that's the one thing that I know you wanted to do with the LCD five. We've had conversations. Was you wanted to do a redesign? Correct. Um, and you want because the, the LCD series has you know looked uh, pretty consistent for well really since two thousand nine. And um, and so I know you wanted to go for a new look, but you you, you still wanted it to be very LCD. Correct. No question as to the lineage, and I think you did that with a meaningful redesign. So can we talk about the things that you changed design wise? Sure. Um, we, this um, headphone was designed with um, the industrial design from Boom Bang in uh, LA. So what we did was one of the things that we wanted to do was to make sure that the LCD uh, flavor is retained still. So um, we tried to update it, make it a little bit more compact, remove the fringe um, uh, flange and stuff like that from our driver and make it more updated look. So that's where we are. And uh, we used acetate instead of wood. Um, there are some small touches like even the small things like the grill here is magnesium. Okay. So it really is, even though even though one might look at the, at first blush, it it definitely looks like it probably draws, maybe even shares components with other. But this is literally all new. Yes, completely. Every Complete single ground part, up. Yeah, ground part. I don't think we use actually any part from our LCD regular LCD headphone in the design. Yeah, I love how it's all new, but again, still looks very much an LCD. Um, I, I would not have guessed it's all new, but I think that's kind of the whole point, right, with this design. So let's talk about what's inside. So what are some of the key differentiators between the LCD5 and say maybe the LCD4 or any of the other LCD headphones before it? Sure. Um, the, um, in terms of the transducer design, again, it's fully ground up uh, design that's new. The thin film um, is, uh, again, our ultra thin film that we use. And what we have also done in this is we have created a new type of trace pattern that is super optimized. We call it the parallel uniforce. We have actually filed a patent for it as well. So that is new. The second thing is obviously you can see from the ear pads and stuff, these are um, designed to reduce the reflections and stuff in your in the chamber here. So it's a substantial improvement on the design of the transducer. Okay, you mentioned parallel uniforce as one of the new uh, designs for the traces. Is, uh, can you just touch on really quickly what that allows for? Yeah, so in one of the limitations when we did LCD4 design and stuff was we could either have a high impedance headphone um, that was very hard to drive like the original LCD4s uh, or um, we could have very low impedance ones and we couldn't because the trace, uh, the metal on the traces were so small. So we wanted to create a long voice coil to get the detail and all these things but still make it very efficient and easy to drive. So we created this new type of trace pattern. That's what this is. Um, we will have a lot of details on this and the published paper um, okay. on this on our website. All right. Yeah, I, so far um, I've been impressed. So, um, and we'll talk about the sound later in the video, but I do want to thank you for coming out to HeadFi HQ to discuss your new flagship planer. It's, it's big news, you obviously are still firmly entrenched in audiophile. Of course we are. This is where we, we started here. Uh, you, know, you, can't, you know, so we have all, you know, internally we have always been working on these things, but uh, um, it's just that we were having, you know, Mobius and Penrose also are very yeah. important headphones for us. So we have been trying to balance, do the balancing act here. Right. You can see why people were wondering though, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you've been asked too. Yes, we have been yeah. asked, are you, you know, the people ask us, why, you know, I see Penrose and Mobius, when is the next LCD headphone? So. So it's not that you're back, you've always been there, you just were quiet for a while on the audiophile front. Correct, and uh, it's just a balancing act, those balancing act for us, right? So sometimes it's important for us to concentrate on those things, but we have always been working on these things and uh, you will see more of these things coming along. Well, we're glad to, to, to see the new developments in audiophiles. So uh, uh, thanks for taking the time to stop by, to come all the way out to HeadFi HQ to talk about this and other things. Thank you, Jude, thank you for having us. The significance of the reduced weight of the Odyssey LCD5 versus the LCD4 cannot be overstated. I was and still am a big fan of the Odyssey LCD4. The 4 has, since its release five years ago, been one of my non-electrostatic references and will remain one. But at nearly 700 grams, the LCD4 is simply too heavy for me.
I can only wear the LCD4 for about a half hour before my neck starts complaining. I know not everyone has issues with the LCD4's weight, so some of you obviously have stronger necks than me. The new LCD5, however, comes in at only 415 grams, and even Odyssey knows the significance of this. Their fact sheet for the LCD5 showing in the specs, not the LCD5's weight, but its blazingly low weight. I can wear the LCD5 all day without issue. Its comfort is also helped by the improved headband and the improved suspension design, which puts a bigger gap between the suspension band and the carbon fiber top band when I wear it. In terms of how the LCD5 sounds compared to the LCD4, it is, to my ears, no doubt more resolving, but with a very different signature, which I'll get to in a moment. With the LCD5, I'm actually reminded more of the new Odyssey Electrostatic Carbon than the LCD4. No, it doesn't sound exactly like the Carbon, but the similarities in sonic traits between the LCD5 and Carbon are unmistakable to me, and I'm not alone here in thinking that. I even EQ the LCD5 and Carbon generally the same way, and I'll get to that in a minute. Compared directly to the LCD4, the LCD5 is somewhat brighter and less forgiving to me, and so on balance, I find it sounds a bit leaner than the LCD4, and less smooth than the higher frequencies. There's more energy up top. It's just shy of what I'd call a bright headphone, as the LCD5 stays within the range I'd call neutral, but only just. Again, the LCD5 is definitely the more resolving of the two, though, and that's a heck of a thing to conclude given the outstanding resolving ability of the 4. And while both the 4 and the 5 are open back headphones, the LCD5 is definitely more open and airy sounding than the LCD4. Without question, the Odyssey LCD5 is one of the most electrostatic sounding non-electrostatic headphones I've heard. Again, there's abundant resolution and detail, but there's an ease with which it's delivered. And the LCD5's brand of neutrality is one that makes me think of the phrase studio monitor, which I think will appeal to most of you watching this. There are times, however, that I'll EQ the LCD5 to satisfy my mildly audiophile bass head tendencies. When I'm in that mood, I'll sometimes use Rune's parametric EQ to boost the bass just a touch with a low shelf. I'll also sometimes take the LCD5's upper mids down just a smidge. I think the LCD5's improvements come after a lot of effort was made by Odyssey to make improvements and advances on many fronts. Now, making the diaphragm any thinner than the 4s was impractical and unnecessary. The diaphragm material on both the LCD4 and LCD5 is already thinner than a red blood cell. But with the LCD5, they went with a new voice coil design that they filed a patent for after a lot of research that equalizes the magnetic force on the diaphragm for better control over diaphragm movement. This is the parallel uniforce voice coil Shankar mentioned in the video. Oh, I should also mention the LCD5's nominal impedance is 18 ohms. The LCD5's magnet design is also all new. Still an Odyssey Fluxor type magnetic array, but with more space between magnets, which is perhaps why it sounds more open than any other Odyssey LCD model, including the LCD4. Even the ear pads had a lot of research and development behind them, with reduced parallel surfaces to reduce resonances, and with less foam than previous LCD ear pads for less absorption of frequencies. There are actually more improvements and developments that come with the new LCD5, but let's just reiterate something Shankar said in the interview. The Odyssey LCD5 is entirely new. It shares no parts with any previous models and was developed from the ground up. As far as I'm concerned, the Odyssey LCD5 was a long time coming, but it was definitely worth the wait. Now let's get to measurements, including some measurement comparisons. The following measurements were made using the Bruin Care 5128, which is the most human-like hearing simulator standard and what we've transitioned to as our primary headphone measurement fixture. The 5128 is the very first hearing simulator that simulates average adult human hearing across the full audio range from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. This is the Odyssey LCD5's frequency response. This is the Odyssey LCD5's THD, or Total Harmonic Distortion. Now let's compare the frequency response of the new Odyssey LCD5 with its sibling, the LCD4. I'm going to show it a couple of different ways. One unnormalized using white noise to set the levels, and then one normalized at 500 Hz, just to give a couple of different perspectives on this frequency response comparison. I mentioned that the Odyssey LCD5 reminds me of Odyssey's new electrostatic carbon. So here you can see the frequency response measurements of both together. And finally, for the sake of direct comparison to some of the most well-known headphones in our community, here's the Odyssey LCD5's frequency response compared to the Sennheiser HD800S. And the LCD5 compared to the Sennheiser HD650. The Odyssey LCD5 should be available very soon, and it'll be priced at $4,500. Thanks again to Shankar Thiagasamadram for coming all the way out to HeadFi HQ to talk about the LCD5. And thank you for watching this episode of HeadFi TV. We'll see you next time and on the forums at headfi.org.